And then the third map, the decider, is Mirage. And the first thing that comes to mind, Boggs, is that all three of these maps are incredibly brawly and can easily be played on if you're a pug. And that's exactly what Swole Patrol is for sure. It's a roster that I don't know if they've actually put in any significant time practicing together. Mm -hmm. And it kind of seems to be a different look every single time we see them. And then Station 7, they have practiced. They're a solid core. But they do have the additions of Droid, a really good fragger in his own right. Mm -hmm. So it will be a very brawly, wide open match. Although I can't help but wonder what the effects of players like Caboose, like Wardell, like Sabrosa will do to bolster Swole Patrol in this game. Yeah, but we, we can't be sleeping on Station 7, Boggs. These guys are the next tough, right? They're the next generation of Counter-Strike. Some of them are young. Some of them are, are been on the grind for a while. And some of them are on the cusp of that breakthrough, right, to that next level. And th these are good opportunities for them to get their names out there, to prove themselves, right, with thousands of people watching across all channels, right? I think Brax is like 2,000 people. Uh, I, who knows how many viewers will be up in here. But, I mean, we have thousands and thousands of people, right? I mean, these, these are perfect opportunities for these players to step up to that next level and prove themselves to everyone watching, to themselves, most importantly. But I think we're almost ready to go. We're waiting on one more player, and as soon as we are ready, we'll jump right into the server. Now, let's... I want to talk about Inferno here really quickly because I think this will be a, a key takeaway for either of these teams, obviously, since, since this is a best of three. But more specifically because of the fact that the next map is Dust2, and that is Swole Patrol's map pick. A map that... Historically speaking, Brax, Swag, Wardell, Sabrosa have all dominated on. They've all been insane on this map throughout their entire careers. And I am concerned for Station 7 on Dust 2. So my personal opinion is if Station 7 cannot tighten up here on this first map, this could very well be a 2-0. But if they can take this first map and give up the second map, or hey, if they can test Dust 2, so be it. You know, I can't predict that, but... I think the third map will be a 50-50. I think it's quite a toss-up. Even though, on paper, the players on Swole Patrol might be statistically more experienced, have more, you know, better stats overall, I do think that Mirage could go either direction. Yeah, Mirage is one of those maps that can flip-flop. It's a very even playing field, but the same could also be said about Dust, too. Probably one of the most underdog-heavy maps in Counter-Strike history at any decent level, is Dust 2. I mean, we've seen so many upsets across the years on that map. Of course, like you mentioned, Swag, an absolute monster on Dust 2. Yeah. Wardell, best opera in North America, in my opinion. Okay. And, of course, Sabrosa. So, it'll be a very interesting look on Dust 2. Swole do love yeah, no to doubt. play it throughout the history of their rosters. But I think it really does come down to Inferno as the win condition for Station 7. Right. Can they do enough on Inferno to take it away from Soul Patrol? Because they're still not bad on this map. Right, exactly. And hey, you say Dust 2 is the number one upset map. I say Inferno is the number one upset map. And those are the first two maps. So if there is an upset to happen, Boggs, it's in these first two maps. Right? I mean, Inferno is such a 50-50 map in terms of how CT side to T side it is, right? We often see teams getting nine round CT side. And literally the next match... Nine rounds on the T side. Match after that, it's eight rounds, right? It's like eight, eight sevens, nine sixes in either direction have been so common on this map. Which and it, they're just it's such a claustrophobic map in the sense that there's so many choke points to get past. Smokes are incredibly effective at many different points in in on the map itself, and it's really easy to to choke up a team. It's really easy to to play your rotates right, to hold down the sites correctly, and it's so versatile. Which is my opinion, uh, why this is. It's the most, probably easily the, the biggest upset map there is in history. I mean, hey, Russian Street Party took a map off INTZ on this map, Boggs. I didn't think it happened. I was about to say, you would know a little something about upsets on this map. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't you believe know. we got upset in that match. But, you know, things happen, Boggs. Sometimes the overdog loses to the underdogs. <laughs> That's how the new crew comes up through the ranks, right? Exactly. But I think we're almost ready. And we'll be having some technical difficulties. If he takes forever to connect, we will jump back to the DJ. We will bring Sabrosa back. So he can DJ until he gets in the server and frags out. But for now, we will continue to talk. You know, I'm actually going to go through the HLTV page and see exactly what's going on on this page over here. Well, oh, I did wait, check I the stats in. real quick. And Soul Patrol has a better record on Inferno than Station 7. Just throwing that one out there. Okay. Mel, 
kick the show. Let's get this started. Let's go into the end game right now. This the side choice is about to happen, and of course it will likely be Swole Patrol choosing the sides, and I think it will be CT side. But Mel, let's begin the show. Let's get to the action. Roy, why was six to four to seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Exactly. Can Station Seven eat Swole Patrol? That's the question on our minds. Or is Station we'll 7 just going to be protein shake for the Swole Patrol? Who knows? Yeah, they got to feed the muscles somehow. All right. Let's see what... Let's, I would, I'm really curious to see how Swole Patrol attempts to set the pace here, right? Are they going to... Like, this map is, is honestly two sides of aggression, I feel. Like, you're never really playing passively on this map on either sides. Like, CT side, you're pushing for control. T side, you're also doing the same. And I wonder if Swole Patrol will come in to try to establish their dominance, to try to establish that level of disrespect as early as possible. Right now, it's two set of utilities for Station 7. No one has really purchased for Swole Patrol except Caboose, who's picked up armor. And I think we'll likely see a, a, either a kit double flash or a kit smoke to hold back the defenses and some sort of aggression. I'm just wondering and waiting to see where it will be. Yeah, I think it's usually Swag who picks up the utility for Swole Patrol. Neptune also known to pick up the kits, the flashbangs. So one of those two players should be picking up a diffuser. I would be surprised if Swole do not pick up the diffuse kit. To go back to our last match, though, Riot Squad. Riot Squad really doesn't buy kits on their pistol rounds on CT side, at least on Inferno. Other maps they will, but I feel like Inferno they just try and win it by actual aim duel rather than having that extra diffuse time. There is the kit on swag, there is the flashbangs, but it's a full-on A rush from Station 7. First shot, first kill for Wardell. He does go down, but Caboose trades. Shonk, Jonah P, Frosty K continuing the train, but Caboose is still alive in pit. The bomb, however, has crossed the site. And Caboose, still holding strong, does get one more before he eventually falls. Now the bomb yet to go down. Shonk with the USP takes out Neptune. But Sabrosa evens the score, brings it back to Swole Patrol advantage, and Shonk walks right into him. The bros is just dancing, waiting for Swag to come on in. The bomb will get planted. This is going to be a tough 1v2 for Shonk. Yeah, and I think he's recognized that they've grouped up together. Now he has that information that they are there, but unfortunately he only has so many bullets in his clip, and Sub Rosa does not let him get that reload in. A proper play, a nice consistency there. Nice, just keep up the pressure, and it will be Swole Patrol to pick up the first round. However, Bob, the bomb has gone down, and there are enough kills on the board here for a serious firepower buy to come out from Station 7. Let's see if they'll have the confidence for it. Yeah, Sean can go straight for the Krieg. Frosty K could go Galil, but he will elect to go MAC-10 Utility. That does seem to be the general consensus on Station 7. Sterling will go for the Galil. Jonah P trying to save for the op, and Shank will go for the AK over the scoped rifle. But up against it is only one M4 from Swole Patrol. They got a bunch of SMGs, which are quite viable on Inferno. And Caboose has a great nade in the mid. How much damage will it do? Actually, not as much as I thought it would. I swear this game is designed to bait casters, Bugs. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Every mechanic. Molly's about to spread? No, it doesn't. Nade's about to do 100 damage? No, it hits a little crack in the ground. Or it just falls into the box stack on Vertigo 8 site and just does nothing at all. Now, this Hall's Pop is almost inevitable here for Station 7. The only problem is Swag will be the first contact. And that player behind him, Caboose, he's playing anti-flash. He's playing bait. This is an easy bait and switch. Easy setup here for Caboose to follow up on Swag's kills. And if Swag gets even one, if he gets two, that's a disaster. So if they eliminate him quickly, maybe they find him on the Hall's Pop. Caboose, still staying alive, is able to get a second kill before... Sterling can capitalize on the Wardell, but he is low. Kaboo somehow able to get three. The rotations are coming in. Molotov's into Wardoff Library, but Neptune has avoided that, working his way through Arches. Molotov's on the site. There's a Molotov and a smoke warning off him. Actually, he had to go planted. Out comes a Broza from Pop from Apps, and he's popped out. Pop Jonah P. And there it goes. Swole Patrol. Two rounds to zero. They shut down the forest, deny the bomb plant, have full command over this initial portion of the map of the half. This is where things get messy for Station 7. Swole Patrol have prime opportunity to build their own bank and really shut down Station 7, get the kills of the SMGs, keep the rifles up, and put the pressure on. Yeah, that lack of bomb plant really hurts things here early for Station 7. I mean, as long as they can do 
if he didn't get a few casualties out of the way right here, that would help. That would help keep Soul Patrol's economy in check. For now, it will be early banana control. All the way down. We have Swag in the corner. And they're swag is only good for two. That's one shot down. If they can eliminate some bros and deny him an MP9 kill, that would be the key. But unfortunately, they're not really trying. They're just feeding. And that's Sabrosa with three kills. Five SMG kills for Swole Patrol would mean that Swag's casualty is really not a big deal. But it was a, it was a nice attempt from Station 7. Now the buy comes out, Bob. They have the op for Jonah P, their, their opper. They have the SGs, they have the AKs, they have enough utility to open up every single option in terms of strategy. That flash from Sabrosa was spectacularly played to get him the final kill from 12 HP. You mentioned Jonah P as the op, Roy, but so does Wardell. And that initial nade does so much on the Frosty. A secondary one comes in from Sabrosa, chips him down just a little bit more, not going to take him out of the fray. But still... Initial damage won by Swole Patrol. And Station 7 still content to hold Banana at whatever cost the Molotov will force Jonah back. And Sabrosa's debating going for a little bit of aggressive peek and said he will smoke off his Molotov. Fall away. Doesn't spot anybody towards logs. The bomb being T-stairs leaves a lot of room for Station 7 to maneuver. Particularly the fact that they have apps and balcony control is great. But Sterling's up against a bait and switch. Swag will trade out. But still, that favor Station 7. Yeah, that's really unlucky for Kabuzu because he was the guy on the far right. He was the one that was being baited for, but Swag couldn't quite get his attention long enough for him not to peek a little wider. Nice awareness there from Sterling, though. And Swag's now hearing the commotion in front of him. He's hearing the scope. He's hearing the utility being used up. That smoke's going to bait them away from that. Wardell will find the opening. Greg will find himself the second as well from sight. Shonk does cut off the support, and Jonah P eliminates Wardell on sight. Things are down to twos. The bomb is being planted safely in sight. Jonah P is hearing Sabrosa jumping in halls. And Neptune really rests, and Jonah P gets caught in transition. That's a massive hit here to Station 7. Yeah, Shonk, not much to do, especially being blind. He will spot Sabrosa in the pit, gets the kill, but cannot get the follow-up onto Neptune. Costly victory for Swole Patrol, but they still have enough for an off again on Wardell. Rifles across the rest of the board. The bomb plant should supply Station 7 with another buy. Yeah, but still, great work on that 2v2 from Swole Patrol. I think that little bit of noise in apartments kept Jonah P's attention focused on Boiler and away from Ward or from Neptune rather. That was really what allowed Swole Patrol back into that, because if Neptune is getting scoped in, chances are he gets opt, and then it's a 1v2 for Sabrosa with great positioning on the site from uh, Sterling. So not much of a chance really there for Swole Patrol if they don't get that initial shot. Swag. Okay, and it still ends up in a one versus one. Not really the flashiest way, but hey, the job is done. One for one. I think Station 7 are relatively happy with that because now they can control and manipulate the rotations. A big piece of the puzzle on Inferno. Nasa Rose has been pushed off. He's going to play the corner. As long as he's here, Neptune doesn't quite have to make his way over. But now that Sub Rose is pushed off and information is denied, Neptune needs to lean a little heavier towards the B site. Yeah, he is doing just that. He's walking slowly around towards Speedway, making his way ever closer to the B site. Smoke will ward off his peak from CT, but he will cancel it out with a smoke of his own. Frosty K looking for an entry. So bros on top of oranges can get exposed, but Neptune is now crossed into sight. There may be a double up, one on top and one towards the new box. And also, where Dell has made his way into the last game, starting to range inside utility, Molotov. And it's a full on shooting gallery for Swole Patrol. The Broza, Neptune, using the Molotov to their advantage. Easy kills. And now, time low. Jonah P and Shang trying to force the issue, but and all that will happen is shots raining into their bodies. Their bodies are riddled with holes. And Swole Patrol moved to a 5 0 lead. And Station 7, without the bomb plant, will have to go for a half. Yeah, and Sub Rosa right now. Sub Rosa is not a player you want popping off against you. He is that person that will single-handedly just carry a team through a game when he's feeling it. No problems, no issues. And right now, I'm terrified for Station 7 by the way Sub Rosa is playing. Just, just perfect, right? Not over-eager, just confident, taking the proper duels, having the right patience when required. And now it's just a mow down, a lawnmower shot here by Swole Patrol. Looking to round over with. 
almost gets caught off, but it's really just down to Frosty K here with the CZ head on her head. Well, no head, Bob. And you know, you need heads to shoot. We'll bail him out there. So Rose to finish up the last kill. Now, Swole Patrol up against another bot, but they've already won six in a row. Their economy is starting to really grow. It's past the point of stabilization. This is a chance for them to put the full-on stranglehold against Station 7 and really get out to a massive lead on the CT side. Get ready to take seat, get ready to take T aggression. And just completely overrun. Bro, swag aggressive down banana. Deals about half damage. The nade will not follow up on anything, but Wardell up close and personal. Gets one and kites away. Yeah, and you gotta love that mechanic on an offing Inferno, right? You're always so comfortable as an opper. You always have corners. You always have abilities to fall back, take a shot, reset, and so little one and dones for an opper. Now it's gonna be Station 7 with what looks like the set piece, but unfortunately they have not denied Wardell vision. He's just gonna linger here. And this is all baiting away from that which is gonna open him up for a kill from behind. It's gonna be Jonah with a casualty. Caboose with one to fall off, but Jonah B is trading quickly. But still, a one versus four, bomb down in sight, being surrounded from all directions. I'm not liking the odds right now. Not liking the odds after I'm liking how Swole Patrol aren't really taking these one-on-one -on -one engagements, waiting for the rotations to come in as they have the bomb down on site. Jonah is able to get another kill before his life is ended. But you know, Roy, you always say that we get the Brazil scoreline once in the series. Are we going to get it here off the back of a forced buy from Station 7? Yeah, last time we were not going to get it, and then someone's mouth literally failed in the middle of the round. And it happened. I'm telling you, the spirit of Brazil, it will, it will make its way in here somehow, and we will see the 7-1. I'm just curious to see how... Watch, it's going to be Sterling running out. No, 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 no. It's going to be Jonah P running out with a Deagle and getting Wardell and Swag. One shots each. Watch this. Full running one digs? Yes. Watch, you ready? Oh, makes a step. Okay, they aren't going to walk into A because the way that Soul Patrol was positioned, it was a complete and total meat grinder over on lane. Three players watching the angle, including Wardell's off. Now the flash comes in on Banana. Who's watching this bus of Rosa? One shot to set. Dre comes through the wall, goes for the third, but Droid is there to meet him. Picks up the AK, he has a helmet, but Neptune is still holding CT. However, his position has been smoked. He sprays blind, and now will rotate to coffins. Does not have much ammunition left, but Caboose coming in. One kill through the smoke, goes for the nade damage. Nobody in grill to die, but Shonk. Lucky he had predicted that nade. We'll get the bomb down. Caboose, not, Neptune rather, not able to spray him through the coffin. But the CZ will finish the job on one player, not quite the second. Wardell will have to be there to finish it off. Chonk did get the Deagle kill, but not quite the round that we were hyping up. You know, no double run, running one Deags. Oh, man. Pretty stout round for Soul Patrol. I think the server is 2NA for the 7 1 scoreline, Boggs. True. The North American energy runs high here. But 8-0 lead right now for Swole Patrol, and Station 7 are beginning to look a little bit overwhelmed on this map. They're not quite figuring out how to advance on any of the map control without losing many casualties, really. It's really just coming down to that, right? It's, they can't go up bracket without getting picked off by Wardell. They can't move up Banana without being pop flashed and some rows of space raining down like this. What I'm curious about though is where, where are the counter mollies? Like, why is this Molotov coming out so late to shut down the car aggression? As soon as you see the CTs starting to aggress, right? You, you just counter molly, counter flash, push them back, make them waste their utility. And when you see the CTs use theirs, you just counter again. They're going to run out. Or there's only two players there usually. We're not seeing any of that right now, Bosh. We're just seeing them be used and abused, but they're not responding back. I can't help but wonder if they're actually trying to fake A again and work it back to B. Because they've used utility, but instead they've fallen back bottom mid, working their way to banana. There's still two players from Swole Patrol here on site. Just droid as the bait, the sacrificial lamb, and he's going to work his way through arches and... Please tell me he doesn't get on the flank. Oh my. You yeah. saw this happen yesterday. Oh, this has been happening. Yeah, this has been happening nonstop. He's a contingency plan more than the sacrificial land, but Neptune and Subrosa, they gotta get by this one first. So 
far so Couple. good. Neptune's holding it down. Allows the bros the opportunity to find a few frags, but he's pretty wounded himself. Now, Joy's gonna sneak up on him, walk through the smokes. But look at the flank coming in right now. There's no time for these plays. You gotta get on site safely if you're Jonah. And he's hearing the, the stampede of players. The flashbang is perfect. Droid is there for the cover. And it's down to the 2v2. No utility for Swole. And no more swag. Wardell on the op. 1v2. Jonah holding oranges. And Droid holding backs. New box. Two shots miss. The spot on new box. Wardell goes for the wall bang. No scope onto Jonah. And now he goes for Droid, but Droid will win that duel. Station 7 scrape away with a round win. This whole patrol will no longer have the goose egg. The 16 0 scoreline going for him. This whole patrol, Station 7 have eaten the breadstick. They have the op back in the hands of Jonah P, but Swole Patrol still have more than enough for a sizable buy. Okay. The, the, the weight of the zero is gone, Bugs. Now they can relax. Now they can start to play this properly. Droid. Heroic round for him. Four kills on all total. And the openers on the on the entry on the anchors rather. Cabooses and hulls. Droid is on an off for it, and he's got him. He expects more. Oh, he does. It's a massive double from Droid. That's the A site all but unlocked. And Station 7 primed for a second round unless Swag can hold things down from Haycart. Swole Patrol have made their rotates in their gamble stack. This is the right call. They have to rotate in. Station 7 could not be working. In fact, be their flashes are out. Blind are Swole Patrol. And Sterling now nets himself a double, leaving Sub Rosa to run away towards Arches. And presumably back to B. Nothing left in him. No HP. And Station 7 with a great ata thanks to droid and sterling on the entries yeah huge round by droid once again opening up those two kills i mean great reaction from swole patrol right instantly recognizing that something needed to happen there they had to take some sort of gamble they were just maybe a few seconds too late right if, if had station seven slowed down for a few more seconds maybe that outcome is different but right now station seven is showing signs of life the money is almost coming to an end for swole patrol the next round will be their full investment, and it will be broken in some ways. I'm just not entirely sure how yet. Neptune is up. He can drop an off over the Wardell. And I think I think it will be fully equipped. But after that is where it gets a little weird. Yeah, after that is where it gets weird indeed, and they need to find an answer to Station 7. We start to string rounds together. They're looking a lot stronger now that they have found their traction. They found an answer to Swole Patrol's aggression. They've waited it out. And they get an apps too. That was just over aggression from Swole Patrol giving Droid a couple straight kills. With Caboose and Wardell peeking into it. Now here comes some utility usage from Swole Patrol burning and nading Jonah P and Shonk down extremely low. Great bit of early utility. The rest of Station 7 is nice and spread out across the rest of the map. The Broza getting tagged, getting sprayed, and getting eliminated. First pick goes the way of Station 7. Yeah, this is starting to feel a little forced, though, isn't it? This aggression from Swole Patrol. I wouldn't necessarily call it over-aggression. I just call it forced. They're trying to make it happen, even when it feels a little awkward. And I think Station 7 is more than happy to receive this aggression in this fashion. Yeah, I think they are. Our control belongs to Station 7. Arms are coming in that it's clear. They have pressured Bracket as well. I think the fallback call is already happening. Sterling, Droid, they're beginning to advance on halls. They know that Caboose just uses the last smoke here, so there's nothing to hold them back once they're ready. The time to strike is now. This A site is weak, and they're isolated from each other, these defenders. They are isolated, but one of them is Wardell with an op. The other is Caboose, and he might just spot Jonah P. He does. That's the bomb. But can Caboose escape? He will actually get himself a double. Looking for the triple. Gets caught switching guns. In the meantime, Wardell fell. Now it's a man advantage for Station 7. Rotation's coming in from Swole Patrol, but already Station 7 have solid post plants. One in pit, one on site, and one tucked in arches. Apps is smoked, and Swole Patrol have a decision to make. Do they go? Do they save? Looks like they are going for the catch off Frosty, but Frosty's doing the catching. Great click on the Neptune. Swag will answer, but I think now he has to save. No, I mean, he has a kit. He saw his time. He can attempt this, but that smoke, yeah, that one seals the field. 
Maybe if he didn't have that smoke, he goes for it. But unfortunately, that smoke makes things a little too difficult for him. And Station 7, once again, showing that they're consistently able to put some rounds up on the board. And they already have three. Next round is going to be a broken by. Full patrol. Probably be gonna, just going to be on these pistols. Maybe upgraded with armor. Swag still has the SG, yes. But that will probably be the only rifle in play. So Station 7, once again, in a good spot for the fourth year in a row. If Swag can do some damage with the SG, drop some rifles for his teammates to pick up, there is a chance that Soul Patrol can come back. They also have a decent amount of upgraded pistols and nade on some bros, which can do some damage. But I think that Soul Patrol's aggression has finally become a little too predictable for Station 7. And they're content to just wait it out, wait for Soul Patrol to push in, and then execute later once Soul Patrol have already been decimated and limited to a 2v2 setup at best. So, really good adaptation from Station 7. You have to wonder how much influence Coach Meech has on this as well. He is coaching that team. And I wonder how much input he has into sort of containing this roster that does have a lot of that aggressive mentality of their own. Yeah, Meech is actually a smart cookie. I'm sure his influence is kicking in here somewhere. Or not? Patience on both sides. I think Station 7 recognizes that they're likely up against this kind of buy, right? Pistols, armor, possible. You know that Swag has a weapon. They're not sure what it is. Frosty eliminates Neptune on the peak. That aid. He said it was going to do damage. That did a lot. Did do a lot of damage, but there's still more players to find, and the bomb has actually made its way to be. All the noise being made, car rotations are coming in. Can Swag hold them at bay long enough? He's been able to get one kill. The boost comes in, but Swag has finally burned. However, the 5-7 gets another half of Jonah P. Frosty is low. There's a chance for Caboose and Wardell. Has been they know there's one in Nemo. They know there's one new box. They don't know about Banana, but they've heard the noise of the players on site. Both coming in from church for Swag. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. Oh, they still get one. Jonah P. getting jumped on. Surely not, surely not! No. No kit. But there is an op. And a Krieg. Caboose. Holds. Wardell peaks. Frosty now just has to hold himself. There's no time for Wardell. Fake flash comes in. Wardell on scopes. And meets his demise. Station 7. Very rough against a minimal purchase. The rifle only did one kill. They are able to get the fourth. But their economy is kind of kept in check off of the back of that. The op is saved, so that helps out a bit. Not bad at all from Swole Patrol. Yeah, what is Jonah P actually holding for, though? Like, you have a player, Banana, they can't be Banana, so you don't really have to hold that kind of deep angle. You could hold CT or the Coffin walk up at least. Uh, I don't know. I really don't get that. And you, you, where was the support earlier? I mean, did they, they heard him jump up, right? Why isn't that Banana player just swinging? As soon as you hear the boost, there's only two players left. It's a little sloppy. I, I'm not going to harp on it too much, but Station 7s, they still secured it. That was a, a mediocre buy from Soul Patrol at best. Mediocres, I think, giving it too much credit. It was extremely limited. And now Caboose on top of the porch. Swings for one, grabs another. Both Sterling and Frosty K eliminated. And now it seems Swole Patrol have gained some momentum back off of the back of a successful half by Neptune falls back to site, regroup with Wardell. As now the rest of Station 7 will plow up Banana and on to B. Smokes go out, they will flash through, and down goes Neptune. Wardell dodging bullets, and the bomb should go down for Station 7, but Swole Patrol have four on the retake, and Wardell has just legged on a peak. buying station 7 tickets the show the utility is still there for swole patrol and they're ready to use that utility to block off banana five flash into the coffins wardell is going to take a deep peek eliminating shock is huge and there it is the flawless retake from swole patrol the full control even with station 7 getting that entry on that b site swole patrol manages the retake and we now see ourselves at nine to four for swole patrol money still all right here for station 7 they can buy up sterling might struggle 
Does Jonah P drop a rifle or buy an op? That's the question here. He goes for the op. Sterling probably going to go for a map. No, those those Galil armor and a flashbang. So a bit light on utility for both Frosty and Sterling. Other than that, everyone is well equipped for Station 7. However, should they lose this round? They don't have any loss bonus built up. They will be full blow going up against potential 11 to 4 for Swole Patrol. That's a very dangerous proposition against a team that is so explosive and can absolutely overrun people on their T sides. Deep nades. Not fruitful. Flash going into the corner. Not effective. Free advancement here for Station 7. They were more than happy to wait out the utility uses here by Soul Patrol. Everything's gone halls quietly. And right now, Soul Patrol is not really sure what's happening on the map. Or else Station find seven. nothing in bracket box. I think they're starting to get an inkling that this is ending B. As soon as these flashes go out, it's going to be clear signs. Let's see if they can get past this boost from Sub Rosa and Crossfire setup for the next one. Rodell running through Speedway. He's making all the noise, but there's no more time. The boost gets one almost a second. And now it comes down to F2. He's been flashed. He's able to get one more. And actually, Wardell from the grave. Actually, no, oh, he's still alive. He's coming in through Graveyard. Gets himself one on the off. He already got the fire kill. Shonk unable to get the bomb down just yet. Flash banged into oblivion. And soon he should be sent there. As he's actually going to go aggressive. Only one though. Caboose will shut it down. Wardell off is salvaged. Swole Patrol will make sure there is no bomb plant and a minimal chance for Station 7 in this round. Fantastic work after they did lose four in a row. It looked a little shaky for a second there, but Soul Patrol themselves had to adapt to not going too aggressive. And to four, Station 7 on their final buy, and this final buy is looking less than ideal. And Soul Patrol might just be on their way for this 11 to five, uh, excuse me, 11 to four. 10 five would be a much better Initiate for Station 7, buying them more room in this next round. Caboose spots nothing out mid, but Droid is hearing a lot of movement here. Grenade on banana does nothing, as there is no banana presence whatsoever from Station 7. Contrary to how they've been usually set up, instead they will smoke off the floor, they will smoke off towards Arches. Caboose, though, spots a leg, gets a kill, but Swag has fallen. Wardell will answer back. Frosty K pushes into Caboose, who is now solo on ammunition. He has to swap to the P250. Spams away, takes out Sterling. Shonk will trade, but I think Caboose has done enough. Wardell should be able to shut down Shonk. He's not even yet able to cross the site, and Wardell will finally put the final nail in the coffin. 11 to 4 for Swole Patrol. Dire straits on their map pick for Station 7. Yeah, and Sabrosa finishes this half with 150 ADR, 460 utility damage. That is insane. The yeah, unfortunate buy for Station 7 in that last round. Not much of a chance given the fact that they had no money. And they weren't really able to counter anything from Soul Patrol. It was raw aim from Caboose. Good predictive spray on the first kill. Jonah P has spotted out the bomb, so there is information for Station 7. However, they're still content to keep three on B, while Swole Patrol have a lot of alt mid control, and they're ready to walk on it. Now Swag, he's making noise towards Banana. That's going to keep them there in anticipation. Really, the hit's coming in towards A. Jonah P enjoyed... They have to get at least a few kills here, I feel, for them to have some sort of success. Rosa finds one. He's going to be set up for the second, but he's only good for one. A two for one deal and a free open A site. Full Patrol are more than happy with that one. The bomb gets planted in the corner for the big pit position, a position that's relatively hard to clear on pistol. And Swole Patrol have set themselves up nicely for a solid 4v3 post plant. There is a kit and a flash for Frosty. His teammates do have armor. But as the bomb continues to tick, if there goes another kill away from Station 7 and in favor of Soul Patrol, they have to contemplate saving the armor and going for the force. However, they will train up. Lane, one for Wardell, two and a third from Ninja Box. Great work from Wardell. Holding it down. Doesn't need any help. They always say Wardell doesn't miss. Apparently, he doesn't miss with Glock either. 
<laughs> yeah, that crossfire was impenetrable. Yeah, even if Wardell did die, there were still more players to meet that aggression from the T or the CT retake. Let's see, let's see what they got on the CT side. That's one tag. That's gonna weaken them. They have a triple set up here on B site. Oh, Patrol's walking into it. There's a chance here. So he gets pushed. No trade until Neptune can finally finish off. Frosty, the nade should take Chonk out of- never mind. It chunks him down by a massive amount of 4 damage. 3v4 retake for Station 7. Although they will fall away to try and save their guns here. Wise decision, keep the armor, keep the utility. Jonah and Sterling could get helmets if they really wanted to up against AKs and Kriegs. Not necessarily necessary. But they do know this whole patrol have a couple SMGs, so we'll see whether or not they decide to buy the helmet. I'm I'm a little surprised that they didn't really hold strong on that on the B setup, right? They had three people there. A little bit more in tandem. And I, I know you're on top of the first orange, so you want to throw that nade, but it gives away your position, right? It, you're literally the contingency plan. You're literally the main pillar of defense at the B side. Maybe not the best idea to give away your position right as the hit's coming along. Especially when you don't have anyone to follow up with you or, or being baited by you. But let's see how it goes. Station 7, they still have some questions on board. Going to be looking for tags. He almost lands the first one. It's a bit of a miss, but you can't keep taking damage. Slow down. War Patrol. As soon as the time is right, they'll begin to advance the bracket. For now, they've cleared out all that he needs. Got it in a nice jump spot. And a good chunk of damage with that smoke. Yeah. Look at all this arch control from Swole Patrol, though. Only doing a feet of counter. He gets a tag off. He's still alive. But soon they will flush him now. The nade goes past him. They will smoke him. Molotov to ward off any more pushes. Swole Patrol flood back down to B. This is a great call. Great mid-round audible. Please tell me. Please tell me they're not abandoning B side completely. Okay, good. Droid is caught in limbo, it seems. Sabrosa's smoke might sell the hit on A. Especially if we get this kill onto Shonk. In the meantime, the rest of his teammates are working their way to B. That should just about force the rotations back to A. Sabrosa versus four. He's just going to try and keep them there while the bomb goes down on B. The jig is up once those digits are punched in. And Station 7 have surrendered a 14th to Swole Patrol. Dust 2 looking more and more imminent. Yeah, absolutely. And this next gun round is going to be their final stand, right? It's really the do or die for Station 7. Swole Patrol one step ahead right now. A one for one trade. Two and, well, Jonah P's been spotted. We're oh, dealt on the hunt. Mac yeah, he 10. is. Okay. Oh. Uh-oh. That's awkward. You always love running out of ammunition. I think Wardell will... Oh, he'll keep the scout, I guess. Thunder's gonna go back to the Mac 10. He will upgrade to the op, though. I think a scout, definitely a justifiable upgrade to the op. Jonah P has one of his own, but it is a glass cannon. No armor for Jonah. A nade can do significant damage. Sabrosa and Swag both have them. Jonah's going to head towards mid. But Swoptrol, heavy banana presence. That nade is Perfect utility. I'm actually a huge fan of that nade. I've been trying to apply it more into my own play box of how effective it is. Spot the corner as soon as you see any pixel moving, as soon as you hear any commotion, you just throw it on the half wall, throw it on the angle wall, it lands right over the half wall, usually hits one person or two people, and that's really the main way Sub Rosa farmed his utility. Now Neptune is eating shrapnel in the halls. This, this early damage, just over 150 damage by utility, is really gonna help Station 7 here. Kills will help him a little more as Jonah P and Sterling both strike first. Sterling looking for a second. And down goes Sabrosa, just Swag and Wardell left. And they are reeling. Swag taken down so low before he's able to finish off Shonk. 
And now Wardell and Apps gonna try and do some damage. Jonah P spots him, both shots miss. And now a smoke will force Wardell away. B site again abandoned. Droid will have to go and retake it. Lucky for him, Swag has not made a B line up and in. In a good spot for the one and done. That's really all he needs, isn't it? Let's get one. Luckily, Swag is incredibly wounded, so that first will be easy. Wardell, if he, get, if he gets in that post man, if he gets set up, it could be problematic. Let's see if Droid can hold this one down. Oh, not oh, even a single shot. Great. I think he was flashed. Bomb has been Either way, that's unfortunate for Droid and great pre-aim by Swag. There's a chance now the op is in new box. And Swag apparently seems to not be hampered by his lack of health. Sterling is low, and they've used their one smoke to banana. So they will have the isolated sight for now. Wardell, if he gets the first shot, this is doable. Swag goes down, but Wardell is still here. No kits, so he can buy time. Frosty taps, spots out Wardell. And now he goes aggressive. That should about secure it, though. Jonah P is off the bomb. Wardell has won the clutch. Map point for Swag oh! Patrol. And the knife for Wardell to top it off. That's the alpha move, man. That's how you do it. That's how you kill their confidence. That's how you destroy them mentally. I told you, as soon as Wardell gets to that post on this B site, on behind that quad box with the op, anything can happen. Wardell just plays them perfectly. Just perfectly. Easy for Wardell. Look at this buy up against map point too. Three UMPs and an MP9, a boss, the best gun for Station 7, and Caboose has eliminated one early on. Oh, I think I've lost my hope in this map. I think it's time for Dust 2. And this is Station 7's map pick, right? This is where they were yeah. supposed to be making their stand, and this is a 16 to 4 potential. I'm actually curious as to why Station 7 picked this map when they have a 25% win rate up. Oh, there's a kill for Droid onto Sabrosa. But instead, the bomb is heading towards A. Only one man to defend it is Sterling with the FAMAS. If he can deal damage and take a couple with him, there is a chance for Station 7. Otherwise, the lack of kits should certainly spell their doom. As now, Swole Patrol splitting in from both sides. The Pinsir maneuver in full effect. Sterling, though, doubles down. Wardell gets the kill. And it's Wag and Wardell once again in the 2v2 situation. This time on the A site. Both players from Station 7 rotating in through arches, and Swag's made his way into apps. Wardell has to stand strong first. He'll ward him off with a Molotov to start. Now, I'm not sure if you caught that as well, but Swag took a peek down middle, and now he has Hulse Control. So they actually know this is both coming from Wardell. Right? Like, it should be easy, but Wardell's not quite looking in the right direction. It won't even matter. Swag's there for the support. He's not going to miss those trades. And Swole Patrol, they get the 16 to 4, the absolute dominance here on this first map. And if there was any opportunity for Station 7 to get some confidence bogs, it wasn't given. Swole Patrol, they're too jacked for any room for confidence here. Yeah. Station 7 became the protein shake on Inferno. <laughs> and honestly, Dust 2 does not seem to be a better fate for them. Only time will tell how the second map will unfold, and we will be going into that shortly. But before we do, please follow our socials. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We're all, we're everywhere, baby. Just follow us along. Follow our content. We have a lot of that coming for you. Check out Wendy.gg if you haven't. They pump out articles left and right. It's awesome. Check it out. And if you're in the market for some CSGO skins, if you're looking for some freebies, if you're looking for a free one terabyte SSD for all of your anime needs, all the highlight reels you could find. Well, we'll be giving some SSDs here as well. So follow our socials for that. Follow this bearded man. His ad's down here below and mine down here as well. And we'll see you in a few minutes for the second map on Dust 2, Swole Patrol's territory.
Kaboos does go down. Wardell does not have armor. That is a nice squishy player to take care of. Caboose creeping up, spotted, gets dinked. Now he just has to hide. Wardell now working closer. He's on the catwalk. Sterling, though, does not have to peek, and I don't know if there's a kit down for Wardell. The shadow shows. Wardell's getting tapped at, but he will win that duel. Plenty of time for the defuse. And Swole Patrol will on their way to a solid start, but the bomb does go down. However, Station 7's previous buy was not too great on Inferno. The long range angles of Dust 2 a little more inclusive for the rifles rather than the smgs but we'll see how it all unfolds the op comes out for wardell it's glass cannon i don't know about this yeah i don't know about this either but i think station seven are not going to take the bait this time they're not going to go for the buy i personally would have liked to see them take it out right here to take the risk it's worth it if you win it it swings the game around if not you're only set back one round not a big deal Okay, he just, Jonah. He just wanted to look against an AWP across all of mid. I don't know if that says good things about Jonah or just maybe Wardell's people be eating lunch. Well, that's definitely a nice wow. shot by Jonah. I'm going to go ahead and just give him the credit right then and there. That's crazy. The AWP is recovered. But what a shot. That actually gives him a huge chance because now the defenses are split. They have an isolated player long. They have Sabrosa alone on the A site in Goose position. And they got these two defenders stuck on B, so no one is quite in middle. And if Station 7, if they can eliminate Sabrosa and minimize their casualties, this is a good scenario for them to be in. Indeed it is. Caboose, though, has picked up the op. He has armor. And he's a former primary opper. So definitely a very capable lad to have the big green gun. Sabrosa will eliminate Frosty without taking any damage. And now the cat push comes in, but Sabrosa has it on lock. He's tapping away. Already hit one more head. Goes for a third. Jonah P will get the bomb down. That is a victory for Station 7. And Sterling trying to take one more down. Jonah P will finish off Sabrosa in the end. And Jonah, how much more can he do? He will be dealt with in due time, but Sabrosa with a nice 4K will be able to do some damage. Get the bomb. Or Sabrosa uh, didn't get the bomb down. He did do a lot to help his teammates win that round. Got a little messy early on with Wardell going down. All credit to Jonah on those deep shots. Yeah. Sabrosa. Minimizing casualties is not in his in his not it's not in his blood. Four kills. Solo defender on the A side. It's good awareness for him to realize that they don't really have any mollies or nades to push you off that angle, right? Just just take it. Just just destroy them from it. And it works out. But now the buy is here. Wall Patrol are heavily invested in this round, right? Just Caboose and Neptune have any money left. Let's see if Neptune can go back again. They're coming to the Molly. They're oh! getting shredded. MP9. Everyone's burnt alive. And Neptune has held it down single-handedly with an MP9. And they just got robbed by the full buy. The AKs, the Galils, the SGs. Throw them in the toilet. Flush them down. They're gone. Just lay them on a table for Swole Patrol to pick up. Because as it stands, Swole Patrol have a great chance to pick up multiple SPs, multiple AKs. Chonk will deal with Caboose, but gets cut out by Sabrosa. Three AKs, two AKs, one SG, three t sided weapons on the CT side. An SG to boot on CT side, Dust 2, with the op of Wardell. No buy from Station 7. I'm scared for Station 7. I, I'm very scared for them. Yeah, this is not really the start that they needed, right? Especially after getting slapped in the first map, 16-4. This is not what you want. And then look at this now. See, now you see where the X Factor begins, right? This is where Swole Patrol has no weight on their shoulders, Boggs. No pressure, no worries. They're having fun. They're feeling confident. And they're starting to do X Factor plays. They're getting Subrosa frisky in mid. They got Wardell covering him from all the way back. This you got Neptune getting the 4K on B. Well, yeah. That's not an X Factor play. That's just Neptune being insane. Very true. Oh, this cat push is going to end in disaster. It's actually a drop right into Sabrosa. You mentioned X Factor plays. That's a good double. Wardell chimes in. Caboose goes down again. Getting one tap by Sterling, who adds a second onto Sabrosa. Makes it a little bit pricey for Swole Patrol, who actually lose one of their T-sided rifles. But now Caboose can get dropped off. He will get dropped a rifle and M4 instead. 
I kind of want to see a double op set up from Soul Patrol on this map, though. I feel like that would be so insane. Yeah, I want to see one too, but I feel like they don't have a reason for it just yet. Especially not with the SG and the AK, right? These are powerful weapons. You don't really need the second op right now. Especially if you want to take the kind of risks that Soul Patrol is taking, right? Pushing into lower tunnels. Pushing cat, pushing long. Fighting on the ramps. Kind of need the rifles for that. Let's see right now if Station 7 have something up their sleeve on this T side, Boggs. Right now, they're looking a little flat. They're looking like they just got squashed on Inferno and they haven't popped back up like an accordion yet. Oh, so Bros is in a great spot to lead down Shonk after this Molotov flies and it does a good amount of damage. And the follow up Molly tags down Shonk to 57. Mid bottleneck for Station 7. And Sabrosa still hasn't been forced away from this position. He's able to just hang out. Will drop now as the Flash forces him away. There still is enough of an A presence to hold Station 7 at bay. They have utility, but I don't know if they have enough HP. As Sterling now eats a nade. 60 HP on him. Jonah's going to have to do a lot of work with his op. And our utility's coming out. Soul Patrol is doing a decent job keeping Station 7 contained in the short eight. But as of right now, there's only one person to watch it, and that's Wardell. And if these flashes are not effective at shutting him down, that will be a problem. A one for one trade out in mid. And Wardell's popping shots off Ooh. now. Nice pick onto Shock, just decimating them. And Wardell, three piece for him. Caboose the swag with the others. And everyone's pinned to the wall like pins. Like this is this is just domination right now. It seems like Station 7 don't even stand a single chance. They had a chance. It was Inferno. This is Swoll Patrol's playground. This is their gym. This is where they get jacked. They've already had some protein. They're just looking to finish it off with a steak dinner. Neptune will get reinforced by Wardell. As the pistol buy from Station 7 should be popping in momentarily. Smoke goes out to force Neptune's vision to... Said he's just gonna spray through the smoke. The Molotov is missing him. Eventually, will catch up. The Dink will help out. Wardell is here. He's still hitting shots. And now Caboose is coming in. Flashbang goes through. Wardell falls. Grid shot from Sterling. A Sterling shot, you might even say. Frosty K has been spotted, and he's been dealt with accordingly by Caboose. Molotov into under window. Sterling's picked up the op, but this is still a very doable retake for Swole. Sterling, he's in a really uncomfortable spot to have the AWP. John, he's trying to one-way the smoke. He gets destroyed. Sterling pops a shot off. He gets the first shot without any casualties. That's it. That's over. The one for one trade. They're happy to make that one for the round. And Caboose, and Rosa to follow up. And Swole Patrol, they improve to 6-0. Six and zero, looking similar to Inferno, which it was an eight and zero scoreline. We still have hope for the Brazil, Roy, with a double op set up now in effect, and it's Young Braxton to pick up the secondary big green. Full buy from Station Seven, and they should be met with a very unwelcome surprise. A long peek from Swag gets the brawl out long. He's still alive for now. He has fallen away. The initial flashes have forced him back. Long control now belongs to Station 7. In the meantime, though, so Rosa's dealing nade damage to Frosty K as he picks up Catwalk. And Wardell in middle has a chance to peek out and eliminate Jonah, and he'll do just that. Okay, what? That angle was not it, Chief. Wardell, he's finding them like flies right now. He's just picking them apart, Bobs. He's fly swatting. Yeah, and it, it seems like Station 7 don't even know, like, they have these early plays in mind, right? They're, they're taking long gate control. They're smoking the corner. It's a beautiful take. They managed to get pit control. One of the stronger positions to have when you're the T side, right? It denies complete mobility on the A site, and he denied them a big part of the map. But then they don't really know what to do after that. They're just kind of standing there awkwardly. I feel like it has been a very awkward match for Station 7. The utility damage has been so good. They will catch Sobrosa getting a little too aggressive for his own good. And Swag has been forced back to elbow as Station 7 plow their way up the ramp. Four members all ready to go. Swag has been dealt with. 
Flashbangs in. The bomb should be going down momentarily. It's a 3v4 retake for Swole Patrol. They have a smoke, a flash. There's a Molotov on Station 7. And honestly, Swole Patrol might be better served to save, but I think they are going to go for it. They have plenty of money. They're going to go for the full set. The boost goes out first. Drops to CT. Sterling walks into him. An easy first kill. Spots one goose. Spots one big box. And they have to know there's just one more towards long. Neptune. Wardell getting the kills. Shonk peeks from long. He gets the wait. double. He has a Molotov. Wardell. Oh, the timing. He just has to hold now. He can win this. Wardell. That was nerve wracking. Okay. Uh, okay. What? <laughs> What is that risky cross from Shonk and why? Oh my god, Shonk. That was such a sick spray down. I have to give him that at least, but what is that cross? That is so risky. That's unfortunate. That was their best chance, Bugs. That could have been the Brazil right there. Maybe it's backwards day. Maybe Brazil doesn't want to make an appearance. Maybe the 7 1 just won't ever come tonight. Maybe it will. Only time will tell. One last chance for the Brazil. Oh, that's a good opening by Frosty. He spotted the gun barrel of Caboose. It doesn't matter, though. Down goes Jonah and Frosty to boot. Caboose is steamrolling them, being the locomotive of the train rather than the back end. And he's been able to fall all the way back to A, where Swag has his long on lock. 4v3 hold for Swole Patrol. And they still have plenty of utility. Caboose with a nade and a Molotov. The smoke up on Catwalk might get one out. And there it goes. Behind the smoke. A whole droid at bay. Sterling's walked out long. Caboose comes into support. Actually gets dealt with. Almost takes out Sterling. Swag next in line as the rest of A is wide open. No more rotations from his team. And Sterling jumps away while the rest of his team walk up Cat through lane and on to plant. Yeah, that was actually really well done by Sterling to keep Brax distracted while the team for Station 7 just moved up towards A. Now the bomb is being planted. Sterling has the rotations cut off, but he's going to get checked by Neptune, and he does just that. Now Neptune's taking some damage. Him being eliminated out here in mid gives them access to short, which leaves them funneled on site. They have nowhere to hide. They don't have long A control. They don't have short A control. Now they're just stuck on the ramp, on the site. Great all the time from Mortel. Forces them out in the open. Shonk has to turtle on the ramp, and Swag is there, spraying away. Clean retake from Swole Patrol. The only damage done was onto Neptune in mid. 8-0 scoreline, just like Inferno. But I can't say I feel like Swole Patrol have more control than they did on Inferno. But you do feel like they have more control or less control? I feel like they have more control. On this map, specifically? Yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah. I think I would agree. I think I would agree. And just like individual prowess is all kind of coming together, isn't it? Like Swag playing that long gate position perfectly, not over peaking, just applying enough pressure. The Maldi comes out, they funnel them into sight. It's just everything is just textbook right now for Swole Patrol. Yeah. There's a map I would not want to play Swole Patrol on. It is Dust 2. And we're seeing why right now. Yeah. And now Swole Patrol don't even have the double op anymore. They back to the rifles. They don't even need a double op setup. They just rifle out. Caboose's double, though, from that last round was absolutely impressive. The follow-up on the on the Frosty K in tunnels was a kill that necessarily he shouldn't have gotten, but since he got it, it pretty much secured the round at that point. Of course, Station 7 did get the bomb down, but still, that was kind of because Caboose went to help out Swag, didn't get the kill. If Caboose gets that third, or Swag gets the instant trade, I don't think Station 7 are able to win the round, or even get a bomb, or are able to get a bomb down, rather. Pressure's coming in. That ball's off the for HP. What? He doesn't even budge. He doesn't even move. Look at this confidence on the man. He's gonna catch one no. and a second with beautiful spray control. And it's just mopped up. All Swole Patrol all night. 9 0. Station 7. They might need to move on to Station 8 because this one might just be bust. Two, three players of Station 7 at two kills. Nobody over 10. Nobody at 10. Swole Patrol bullying the young guns of Station 7. They're stealing the one. They're stealing the weights from them. They're not allowing them to get anything, not build up any muscle. And the buy from Station 7 here. 
A far cry from anything likely to pick up rounds on Dust 2. It down. Oh, that's a bald head. Rosa cleaning up once again. And who's, who's popping off for Soul Patrol? Is it uh, literally Wardell the exact Sabrosa people that, I, that we said would pop off on this map? So Rosa, Ordell, Neptune. You know what's actually insane is that Neptune's the B anchor, so Rosa is the A anchor, the guy who's kind of leading for sight. And then you have Wardell kind of floating in all the positions, right? Like imagine you're going to B and you have to fight Neptune. Then you go out long and you're also fighting some Rosa and you just don't even get a single kill and just lost all the Oh, there's some Rosa again. And now it's Neptune's turn to get a kill in middle. And he might get the second, swaps to the Molotov, back to the AK. Droid will deal with him. Young player versus young player. Now some Rosa should be able to get his fourth. Good flashbang in onto Droid. The bomb is down. They know he's coming back top mid as Wardell has eyes on CT. How do you counter this at Station 7? I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin. How do you counter four kills from Sabrosa? The bully out long. Goes for the full-on brawl play. Wins two kills clean. Gets a third through the smoke. There's no stopping this man. Yeah, uh, to, to be fair, Station 7 is completely disjointed, right? They yeah. haven't really done any of the things that have worked for all the other teams who have had successes on this map. They haven't done solid mid to Bs, right? They haven't been able to fake them well enough to do mid to Bs. They haven't done any execute off short A. It's just been these like really bad hits, but they don't have flashes that are chaining to deny the opera playing game helper the opportunity to pick them apart, right? You gotta need that. Yeah. Where's the where's the CT smoke that you can throw from Cat? Where you can just jump down, double peek the opera from elbow from CT spawn. Like, where are all these these things that that are proven to work on this map for Station Seven? Right? Like, at some point, you can't just rely on your individual aim. Like, great, you're Station Seven. You have great mechanics. That's awesome. But like, you need so does so does Sabrosa, so does Neptune, so does Wardell, so does Caboose. I mean, Caboose has been slept on for years, man. This guy's actually insane. I know, I mean, he hasn't had to be tested much, and when he has, he's answered the call in this series. I feel like he's kind of just that guy on Swole Patrol that just does work, like Mitch on Riot Squad. They're really good players, but they're slept on because they just do consistent work, and they're not exactly the most flashy of players. Especially when you have guys like Wardell, like Sabrina. And then Swag getting a little too over-aggressive, gets punished for it. But Wardell is next in line. Ames of Rose, or Neptune rather, is going to walk up Catwalk. He'll be spotted. He'll be forced away. Molotov will allow him to escape. Station 7, though, despite getting the man advantage, still looks lost. They're grouping up on Catwalk. The nade will chunk them down a considerable amount. Oh, look at Sabrosa. Oh, my gosh. No, no. Does he get there in time? I think it seems like George is actually looking for it. George is looking for it. Okay, that's good awareness. I think Sabrosa is still going to eagle it. I like the eagle fight. Just take it. He's got it. Sterling eliminates one. And they should... Wait, Station 7 should know that they can just mitsubi here for free. Oh, they picked up on that's, it. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what what the oh, they can do it for free, Roy. They peek before the smoke pops. And Wardell will not miss. Wait, is there a smoke in middle right now? I need to know. I think there is. Yeah, there is. Yes! We're not seeing 16 0. Let's go! They have done it, Box. The big O, it's gone. The round that they dry peek into Wardell in the middle is the round they win. Okay, I want to know who threw that failed mid to be smoke when they were already out of mid. You just got to toss it, man. Just toss it in front of you. What does that bounce off the wall? Good Caboose, he spotted Jonah, that's a free kill again, Jonah dies on the boxes, and Caboose is gonna go back for more, he double dips, taking out Frosty, while Shonk will trade, it's still a man advantage for Swole Patrol, Deep Molotov onto Droid from Neptune, who is on Catwalk, the nade might do some damage onto Shonk, and Vita takes him down below half, and Wardell, watching for the mid push, should be fed momentarily, as Shonk will have to cross eventually with the bomb, down it goes, and Station 7, 
right back where they started, slapped back down by the buff biceps of Swole Patrol. Uh oh, close for the shot. It's missed. That bomb needs to be recovered. There are flashes available they could use. What are these Molotovs? Fellas, you need, you need to get the bomb, not deny yourself from getting the bomb. Uh -oh. Okay. They do it. Oh, 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 good cover from Sterling. Just take them into B, boys. You got it. Three passes. Oh, okay. No, he just nope. got destroyed. Swag got it. And then Neptune channels his inner Stewie 2K, pushes through the smoke. And Swole Patrol gets a little costly there in the end, but they are able to get the 12th. Station 7, do you have enough for another buy? It's just... It's a little painful sometimes, you know? Ooh, scout tag from Jonah. Oh! And the tag all right, Jonah. Prime example of why this map is the greatest design of all his... Okay. You know what? The smoke that's caused by the nade the HE explosion, that needs to be nerfed as soon as possible. Three. There was a time when people would use that as a smoke across mid doors on Dust 2, without having to waste an actual smoke grenade. Oh. Uh oh. Jonah just dinks down Sterling a little more. But Swag. Oh, that's a good flashbang. Sabro to do with the ops. Swag's just buying time. Getting a kill as the Rosa falls away, gets another. Sterling's low, Sterling's down. Never mind, Sterling's getting the kill, but so Rosa is still here. And he's gotten it to a 1v1 for Neptune to come in on catwalk. Droids picked up the op, he has a Molotov. He's waiting, and Neptune's buying time. The Molotov will hold him at bay unless he wants to charge for it. He will! And Droid is ready. Great awareness from Droid. And it will be a second for Station 7. However, 12 to 3 half is their best possible option. And that doesn't sound good. Alright, call me crazy. Call me an idealist. Call me delusional. Station 7, they get these three. They win pistol. They win the first gun round. Action is booming. I believe in them, Boggs. I will believe in them if these conditions are met. Conditions do have to be met, and Swole Patrol need to cool off, because Rosa has been doing a massive amount of work. Neptune, Wardell, Caboose. Yeah, I feel like Swag's been the silent one. Swag has been. And now that Swole Patrol, yeah, he has. I think over both maps, actually, he's not exactly been tested too much either. Yeah, I don't feel like he needs to do much on this lineup. They, like, they already have enough star potential that he doesn't really need to fill that role. Especially with Neptune and Sabrosa just popping off. Sabrosa has 180 ADR. It's disgusting. Holy. A lot of util out on A. Sabrosa is here to defend the flashbang, holding him off, but he is not to be denied. One does not simply deny him of kills until Droid. Is there to answer? 4v4. Swag next in line. Takes down Droid. Almost gets Shonk. Sterling falls to Neptune. Bomb yet to go down. Molotov's the CT and a catwalk. 3v2 retake for Swole Patrol. Jonah has the op. There are kits. There is utility for Swole Patrol. But all the way up cat. Shonk's pushed his way through. Neptune, though, will be able to catch Jonah for free. Now, Shonk has fallen as well. 13 to 2 scoreline. Roy, you still have that faith. Yeah, no, that faith is gone. My first condition is not even met. You know what's actually funny is Swole Patrol, they're so zoned in. They're so focused that even when they've wiped the entire team, they're still looking for that next player. They're still hunting for that next kill. But it's already done, boys. You got the kills. And it takes them like a few seconds after they get that last kill to realize, like, oh, it's clear. It's clear. All right, let's defuse the bomb. I wonder if we'll see that again. And <laughs> It's just so funny to watch how zoned in they are right now. It's... <laughs> Hilarious. And let's see what they can do with the Glocks. Wardell has been raid bossed. P250 in hand. Caboose going out long early, not finding anything, not going for any early p too aggressive peaks. Wardell though from B. Ten bell shot onto Sterling. 
Shonk getting aggressive. Spots the bomb. Spots a second. Looking for the kills. Eventually gets overwhelmed, but Droid is there. He has the bomb now, but Sabrosa can recover it. Two rounds in his USP, but he is on Terminator mode. He has a mate with him. Now Neptune and Sabrosa will continue their aggression out long. Wardell holding in middle. Smokes will go to cross, wall off the cross. One on catwalk, one towards car for station seven now to elevator. And Wardell will make his way up cat now. Crispy from Sabrosa. He has been hitting his shots. Neptune now spraying away, gets through. And the smoke is keeping station seven at bay. They're rotating the catwalk, but the bomb has been planted. Potential 14 2 for Swole Patrol. Oh no, if he crosses to this blue bin, it's over. Oh, he's just gonna hold this person instead. And, well, he has cover. He doesn't really need to peek, but it's gonna, the crossfire is so real. We can't even deal with it. And it seems like every time Station 7 makes a decision, Swole Patrol is already there, Boggs. They're waiting with open arms. And this is what I would call the arm bard. That's it. It's just a matter of time before Station 7 taps out of this one mentally, round wise. In every aspect, box. Station 7's caught under the bench press. They're stuck. And Swole Patrol's not going to spot him this time. Gave him a few rounds extra on Inferno, but this is their home map. This is their playground. And they're moving on to the next episode. It's right now. It's full control. Last ditch force for Station 7. They'll have one more to follow should they lose this round, which presumably they will. However, they do have Deagles, Jonah Pease, don't know what he can do with it, but he is dealt with first. And Caboose will trade out the bros, the next player is Frosty K. Caboose sprays in with the Krieg. That's eight side open. Okay, Droid. Down goes Swag, that's an UMP picked up. So a great long-range gun for Dust 2. As the bomb makes its long way through the long side of the map. Sterling doesn't spot any cross. The Molotov goes out. Wardell moves to long. The retake might be on for Station 7. I feel like they're just playing retake. And now, with Sterling down, I think Droid has to just go for a save. Give himself a decent chance to go on the 15-2 comeback. So you're saying there's no chance. You know... <laughs> I always bring way. it up when I have the chance. Is Taco's quote. Hit me with it. What is it so again? So we're playing Virtus Pro. Mm -hmm. So we're playing Virtus Pro. Okay. And the score is 15-5. All right. Ball on set. We think we are good. We win this now. 15-5. Did we win? Of course not. 16-5. <laughs> you know, I've heard you say that like a hundred times and it gets me every time. It's my favorite quote. Did we win? No. 16-5. 15-2 seems to be a little a little bit worse than 15-5. And the buy for Station 7 definitely not to par. Caboose is tagged down low. Zabroza will get the opening, and he's going to push towards the fire. Wardell tossing scouts around, trying to grab the AK from Caboose. As Sterling will try and face, the flashbang goes in. He's done enough for a kill. He has a teammate with him. The smoke will wall off CT. Tag from Sterling, but he will meet his demise. The Sabrosa spots the flashbang, taps his head, and now it's the split on to B. Two players from CT coming in through middle. Wardell will spray for one. Flick onto CT. He thinks there's a man CT, but instead Droid's doing it all. He's gotten two on B. He's gotten the bomb. Never mind. He doesn't have the bomb. It's mid, but never mind. He still has the flank. Shonk will do the final touch. Three rounds for Station 7. Comeback time. Let's go. All right. All right. Oh, my God. He has 30 kills almost. 29 and 13. 159 ADR. You know, Droid has been good on this map. Oh, he was good on Inferno as well, right? He opened so many rounds up for Station 7. Yeah, jokes aside, yeah. though, like, Station 7 are, they are good players. It's just they're kind of outmatched. Yeah, they kind of are. They're punching above their weight class. Jonah. 
Up against Wardell, he has backup from Sterling. Flashes come through. Kills going the way of Sterling. A great spray. Sabrosa down to 12 HP. He's been good. I don't know if he can be this good. I think that we will see a fourth for Station 7. Oh, oh, oh. Don't, no time to... Sabro Sin, get the gun. Get the gun, man. There's no time to T-Rex right now. Get that. There he is. Oh, does he just walk through the smoke? No, it's not the time for it. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. Oh! All right. 15-4. Did we win? No. 16-4. But still. Well, the buy from Soul Patrol, I highly doubt it will be a 15-4 final. Unless something goes horribly wrong for Station 7. Which actually, in my there's such a heavy presence out long, there's a chance for Soul Patrol to overwhelm B. If it ends like this. Please tell me it doesn't end like this. Surely not. Ooh, okay, no, definitely not now. Here comes the flash. Here comes the play. First kill for Sterling. Looking for the second. Sterling, four kills. Looking for the ace. Frosty K steals it. But a great shutdown from Sterling, who was coming alive here in the second half. 21 and 17. Trying to put the team on his back and drag them further across the line, edging towards victory. AKs now for Swole Patrol. Wardell, though. He's got other ideas. He's going for the D glass cannon. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I'll see you guys in the next gun round. Oh, Neptune. All right, all right. So, the giant is down. Nice and Neptune. Ne he got the Ray Bans on? Because this man is immune to flashbang. He's on for the 4K. Wait for Sterling, who will win that duel. But I think Neptune has done enough. It's a 1v2 now for Sterling. Swag holding oh, the mid cross no. as Wardell moves to be. I Swag? thought I thought Swag was just gonna flank CT knowing he was gonna be here. I think he still has an idea yes. he is here. Yeah. I like how Swag is playing this passive though. He doesn't need to force the issue. Wardell needs to get the bomb down first. Yeah, this bomb gets planted B. This chances of Sterling coming out on top here are so low. The bomb has been planted. Did we win? No. 16-5. Oh, he's made noise. It's all over. Swag will pop out and deal accordingly with Sterling. And that, my friends, is the second quarterfinal for Winners League NA. Congratulations to Swole Patrol. Commiserations to Station 7. They don't need to hang their heads. They put in some great individual performances. Swole Patrol, definitely a solid opponent. And more to come from the young guns of Station 7. Yeah, and we did see, I mean, jokes aside, we obviously harped on them a lot, but jokes aside, these players are actually on the come up, right? They've just recently broken through to the semi-pro scene. And I think over the next couple of years, or even probably within this next year, we'll see a lot of these teams on kind of the cusp of the pro league, right? And they are relatively a fresh roster, right? They're playing against people who have decades of experience combined. And of course, Wolf Patrol is also the kind of the next generation of Counter-Strike. So it's just a little bit outmatched. Commiserations to Station 7. They fought really well. They've provided us entertaining CS at the very least throughout the season. And we hope to see them again in the next season. But for now, they are eliminated. However, Swole Patrol, they have just secured themselves to be the second team to qualify for the semifinals. And we will see them in the next round. But for now, we are out of here. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for the positive vibes in the chat. We appreciate all of you for being in here. Please do follow our socials. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Whatever you got, we are on there. And check out win.gg if you haven't. They actually pump up some great content. And I'm not just saying that. I don't get paid to say that. I just say that because it's actually a cool website. Now, follow this man over here, over here as well. For every follow, he can afford a razor to shave that beard. Me down here below, I don't want to shave my beard. Of course, follow Melanie, our producer observer. She does a great job behind the scenes. And if you're in the market for some skins, some CSGO skins, or maybe some one terabyte SSDs for all of your anime highlight clips and all your pirating needs, well, we got you hooked up. So make sure to follow on our socials to enter those giveaways. But for now, we are out of here and we will see you guys. I think the next broadcast is scheduled for Saturday and I think it's INT.